That's how I am after I read the first page. As soon as I open it, <laughs> reading the table of contents. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? What up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Greetings. However, whenever you're watching this, we appreciate you because you already know time is expensive. Thank you for tuning in. And if you're here for the first time, the show is about anything and everything creative. creative. Anything that sparks your creativity, whatever medium you dabble in. Expressing the soul, speaking your heart. And welcome to the episode of Creativity Unsheathed. I'm Olaf Siegel. And I'm Nino. And yes, we are brothers. Yes, sir. And this is the show where we feel that urban legends can be true. Yes, there is a saying where legends are the stem of the truth. Yeah, right. There has to be some kind of history to any story. Right. And then if you want to go sports, you know, you know, with Michael Jordan being the, being one of those living legends. No, now it's going to be Curry, yeah. future legend. Oh, it already is, but... Another Michael, like Michael Jackson, you know, <laughs> what, an icon, what, he's, yeah. what he's done in music, you know, yeah. controversy or not, but he's just known for the music that he's put out. And, Globally. Right. Making that impact. Yes. So, you know, however you want to look at living legends or urban legends, you know. Like Bruce Lee. <laughs> martial arts, you know, changing yeah. changing the game of martial arts, creating something of his own, JKD. Mm -hmm. You know, a legend. <laughs> if someone can change your life, I think that makes you a legend. Oh, that, that's big facts. Hell yeah. yeah. Like, like you can inspire them. Mm -hmm. You know, matter, no matter what status they have. And while we're talking about this and what we're looking in today is... Simon Dark, y'all. Yes, sir. Created by one of my favorite horror writers, Steve Niles. Nice, along with nice. uh, Scott Hampton. You know, the same creative team of uh, Batman. County Lang, yeah. 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 Uh, we did an episode on that. You guys can backtrack on the on the catalog and look up at that episode if you haven't seen it. Yeah, man. The but, cover. I mean, they made a big, big name of uh, in, at DC, and they got their own. Create their own, man. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, I think <laughs> it's, it's one of uh, DC's uh, underrated and forgotten heroes. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like DC should go back and just revamp Simon Dark. That's like his main weapon. The wire. Oh, totally. In, I mean, I don't know what they call it, but... Yeah. Kind of like, um... Like a ninja weapen. Like Hitman, too, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah good. Definitely Hitman. Yeah, but not a shop. No. <laughs> so, in the... Um, we had... We are showing you guys the six issues here. An 18 issue to run. But what we got here is just showing off the six. But, of course, we're going to just, you know, dabble into the first issue. Sir, please do. But, you know, I just wanted to point out, like, each, um issue has like a different uh, subtitles mm. uh, just kind of gives off like a, um, a Stan Lee yeah you know like type of the amazing Spider-Man right? spectacular that, that kind of whole shout out yeah yeah so you know, like, let's look into issue one y'all ooh it's a good movie y'all have you seen this? Flight yeah. of the Living Dead mm. it's a good movie not bad not bad at all Tap them. Create a team up front. Cast and crew. Simon Dart, created by Steve now Scott Hampton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So the whole narrative with this Simon Dart is, you know, he is another guardian or protector known to be from the Gothamites of a small neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of has like a... a Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger type thing because uh, er everybody that knows of him, there's like a nursery rhyme. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that kind of distinguishes him when he's here. It's like across from uh, Mike Myers and Freddy Krueger, but instead of blades, this is a sharp object, wire. Oh yeah. Because he actually cuts off. Right, even though he's like questionable, like uh, Punisher, yeah, he's still a hero to the neighborhood, probably yeah. like, of the neighborhood. Yeah. You know? So these guys are being executed. Bang. What did they call? What did they call? Uh, execution style. So he has uh, maneuvering capabilities. Mm. Nice work there, Scott Hampton. Yeah. 
Tradition now? Yeah. Tradition now. Pretty good. Oh yeah. <gasps> Whoa. Not like Headman. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Movies are okay. Yeah. yeah this, the design's a little confusing. But that's why you need the colors, yeah. The kudos to uh, Bob Budiansky. <laughs> yes. Cartoons were better. It's really cool. It's like just a silent scene. No need for action scene, right? Mm hmm. Quick. Like a, an assassin. Yeah. I wonder if he used like any paint. Or you think like some digital paint? Maybe that's all, all in the color, Suzanne. Mm hmm. Spirit in his life. There it is, a survivor. You're welcome. Hmm. Thank you. And all he wants is food. We'll do justice for food. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's even better. It's a new way of looking at a hero or a hero's uh, reward. We'll do justice for fun. Sounds like salvation. I mean, like, 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 uh, Some YMCA. <laughs> like soup kitchen help. Like, mm. yeah, it works. Slogan. Corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Puppy. Oh, it's an abandoned church. Of course. All right, and they want to do an uh, execution ritual. I'm trying to see. <gasps> Decapitation. Yeah. Of course. Damn, even severed the bone. The strong, whatever that is. Yeah, the cable wire. <laughs> cable wire. <laughs> 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 so deadly you say it twice. <laughs> it's like lethal weapon. Deadly weapon. Cable wide. Perfect weapon. That's <laughs> <laughs> good so Oh, it looks real. Ah, good balance. Right here too. Good break. Yeah, they don't wanna like Bad tangent, you know. Yeah, pretty good. Cool. Pretty good. So this uh, his little nursery rhyme from the neighborhood kids that know of him. Yeah, noticed the kid in the side of the mirror. Nice, nice touch there, Scott. Good job. Awesome way to use the camera and yeah, and just play with angles. All right. This is the uh, little nursery rhyme. Works in the shadows, hides in the park. Sam, 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 da. <laughs> if you're little, stay away. If you're, if you're bad, he'll make you pay. <gasps> Looks in his shadow, hides in the dark. Simon, 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 dark. Hope I don't see him tonight. So. <gasps> don't, don't, don't. It's good. Mm, good job there, Steve Nams. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind seeing a show or series. Totally. That's I like, would rather see this like a series. That'd be cool. Or something on CW. Yeah, like what? How many? How many Freddy Krueger movies they made? Eight. Mm -hmm. Almost ten. Why not? It's up there with Fast and Furious. Right? Just, just about. Yeah. It's up there with Fast and Furious. I mean, if if you you made Fast Ten, so if you want to uh, count um, Wes Craven's new. New Nightmare. New Nightmare, yeah. And then uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the actor who played Rorsatch. Yeah, right. including that. So or, you can say that's 11. <laughs> but when James Bond takes the cake, it's fucking what, 24? Shit. <laughs> I don't know. How many, how many <laughs> more bondages can you go? Double orthopedic. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, local neighborhood convenience store or a little market owned by this gentleman here so it's pretty cool that we get this medical examiner and the story bounces back and forth between her and uh, Simon and then they later on like connect in the story it really like it's really like <laughs> not my own street just like randomly having children play and yeah, give it like a supernatural vibe. 
totally. And this is a supernatural uh, element to it with you know the sacrificials and spells, yeah. spells and stuff. Dark magic. Crazy. Suppose this is based off a graphic novel, y'all. What do you think? We never heard of it. Has anybody seen it? And then it is. Look yeah. at the cast and crew. I mean, yeah. maybe a book, maybe a movie ahead of his time. Oh shit! Justin Timberlake. Right. So now we're at some schmancy house, fancy schmancy house. I really like uh, Scott Hampton's moods and like really gives that vibe of eeriness and dark tone of a uh, of a horror film. Yeah. He really put the warm in there. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the colorist for really helping out on that. Yeah, right here too. There's the, the chair. It's really good lighting. Just adding that edge of lightness, hitting it. Looks like a movie. Totally. So you really can see like Steve and Scott working really well together and just executing a well, like paced out story. You know, mm -hmm. it's like for the most part, he's always executing a three to four panel sequence yeah with like good dialogue yeah it's good look at that it's awesome lighting yeah damn that's really good good job colors so really really sells the mystery <laughs> yeah. good job good job it's good balance right here huh totally mm, could have been cool but like just a little brighter maybe but it, it still works mm. It works. She's moving to moving into the new house. <gasps> nice. Everyone needs a copy of Andrew Allen Poe. And I try to look for that story in that uh, anthology collected book of that we have of his uh, of his work. Mm -hmm. It's not in there. No. No. Tales of mystery and imagination. Something that we gotta look up ourselves. That's cool. Only highlighted the red. Yeah, that's really cool. Like it goes with the book. Yeah, yeah, same thing. And then look, before it before it snows. Really cinematic, and then how it flows into the next. It's awesome. Ready? Grab the book. Yeah, dude. So. You, Totally, we get in manga, but you know it's cool that Scott's able to execute it himself. Yeah. It's like you can tell when an artist likes drawing repeated stuff. Yeah. You know, for the sake of sequential art sake, mm -hmm. you know, not so much compared to other artists where they just draw like fancy panel to panel. You yeah. Know, no, no real sequential. You know. Mm -hmm. There's no real like natural flow. Yeah. And like that's why you, like, you can also. Re appreciate some old school books especially European books where they just have the simple panel layouts you know yeah. but then it's, there's still a cool element of sequential art in there yeah, it's still tell the whole story it doesn't need to jump out the page all the time nah. they're like yeah, hardly anything jumping out like, if this was an image book they would definitely take out this whole space with this panel oh yeah I didn't have no borders and just have this out there yeah they would probably like had this one big splash page and add maybe th this panel and this these two panels and then everything else it's caption like, yeah inner monologue and, yeah. yeah but it's like I really appreciate Scott Hampton because he's able to execute that nice sequential mm -hmm. visual yeah you really put thought into it oh yeah it's like again I really want to see that script and I see it as like is it full script? I don't know, like film? It's like you can tell who really wants to be a director and who just wants to be the assistant director. <laughs> oh, definitely. That's, yeah, that's that, the division, right? Yeah. Like I want to tell my own story. Yeah. You know, I just don't want to just copy and paste. Yeah, so like what if it's just like, okay, you know, Steve want, asked me to do a five, six panel sequence so I can cut it down in four. Yeah. All right or cut it down in three. That's why you always see like three to four panel breaks. And then more action, less dialogue. Yeah. Right here and then you get the classic six panel break. But you know, still kind of shows that feel flow. Yeah. Huh. He's like a, kind of like the Edward Chisholm. 
Oh yeah, yeah. That that whole feel. If if you were to become a superhero and fully animated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn, you have this whole underground layer. Ready to binge read. Got his snacks. <laughs> right. Got his snack. Oh, and cat food. For his pet. What yeah. a pal. What a pal. Sounds like a cool night. Pretty chill night for Simon Dark. It's autograph of uh, Simon Dark cards. <laughs> it's not cash, y'all. Like, oh, hell yeah. Mint condition, PSA. I'm gonna have a PSA right now. <laughs> Hot thing. Yeah, I totally get the Freddy Krueger vibe with mm-hmm. uh, his stripes. And then the Mike Meyer mask. Mm hmm. It's awesome. Hey, maybe that's how you can do it by the Mike Myers. Add these stitches and just buy the black wig. Oh, true. Like white, like long strangly wig. And um, then trench coat. And there's like different versions of the mask now where it's more like from the later movies where it's like more burnt and more worn and torn. Yeah, so maybe, yeah. That, right. that could be this. If you want to go MacGyver your own mask. <laughs> Add a little more, or like, damage mask. Yeah. Beat it up a little bit more. Catch out. Of course. That's how I am after I read. First page. As soon as I open it. <laughs> <laughs> Reading the table contents. It's good. It's a good book. Alright, y'all. That was Simon Dark. If you guys didn't know this existed, if you didn't know that this was one of DC's forgotten heroes, now you know. Bring it back out to life. And go to your local comic book store, bookstore, however you get your books, and grab a copy for yourself. Whatever bin you guys find it in. You know, definitely support Steve Niles, Scott Hampton, if you only read their Batman County line. Mm-hmm. Now you know, they did Simon Dark. Oh, yeah. So now, yeah, go out. Pick it's it good, up. good follow-up to that. I agree. Right. I agree. They're keeping that dark mystery of Gotham. Yep, totally. As if, like, this he could be part of the Bat family. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. What do you think about that, DC? Can Come take on. their idea now. Huh? <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> it's like almost their supernatural version of uh, Punisher. Exactly. All right. Really questionable um, actions, but he's still a hero amongst the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You know, a small neighborhood. Be for Vendetta. Totally. Ooh, and DC as well, right? Totes. Totes my goats, y'all. Okay, guys, get a copy. It's really fast paced. Uh, you know, even though it's 18 issues, it's really cinematic. Yeah. You know, there's a real twist at the end. Totally, and it's like you really, um, Steve Niles really has it well thought out, and he really spreads it out amongst the 18, and it's you it really made it compelling where you want to know who this Simon Dark character is. Yeah. Look, he rips off the roof of a car. Like, wouldn't you want to know how? Right? Oh, wow. I do, because I want to read it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, what's the whole point of these uh, se- uh, severed heads, and what does dark magic have to do with it? You yeah, know? yeah. So you guys got to get a copy, you know? Yeah. Trade? Yeah, get it, experience it. Simon Dark. Right? Simon says so. So that's seven and eight. Cthulhu S. Right, it's really cool. And HP again, Lovecraft. Like, is. They continue like these cool slogans along uh, on each issue. You know, that's what it is, huh? Slogan. Yeah, you know, sub subtitle slogan. However, oh, you want to go title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, Simon on a rampage. That's really cool. Issue nine, ten. The demon plague. Almost looked like power. Totally. And it's and it's all the covers is still caught Scott Hampton. 11 it's pretty cool it throws in monsters that's cool that dives in more into the supernatural adding creatures and stuff Mike McNola feel, feel like yeah kind of feel you know it's pretty cool are you afraid of the dark nice. Simon Dark Nickelodeon oh <laughs> the Midnight Society mm. the Netherworld beckons Simon Dark like as it gets farther down, like from here, it really gets darker and like answers, you get the answers of who he is. Yeah, dude, uh, you guys gotta read this. Totes. Issue 15, 16. Pretty cool covers. Simple covers, cool covers. Really impactful. I can see this shit on the shirt. Like Ooh. on the left side. Hell yeah. Ooh. Creepy and yet effective. Right. 
Issue 17. 918. That's cool. This might be my new favorite character. Oh yeah. Totally. Right right up there next to the crow. Yeah. Ooh. I'm sure they will remember Silent Dark. <laughs> so yeah, yo. Whatever Benny and guys find it in, go get it. Gotta read it. Alright y'all. We're gonna end this episode with a motivational quote for y'all and let the value hit you for what it's worth. If you heard it before, a nice reflection of where we are today. Yes. And uh, this one is by Dan Millman, a speaker and writer. Uh, and he states, By expanding our deepest beliefs about what is possible, we change our experience of life. End quote. Ooh. Right? In the words of Shia LaBeouf, nothing is impossible. No, nothing is. Nothing is impossible. More if nothing is improbable. Yeah. Right? You know, probable is... is a different meaning from possible, you know. Probable is more likely, meaning more likely to happen yeah. compared to possibly, it's less likely to happen. Mm. So, you know, when you keep that positive mindset, you know, making that change for yourself first, yeah, and then it just ripples around you. Yeah, you, you help shine, you help you know, make others people shine, and you uplift others for sure. You know, by setting good examples. Mm -hmm. Like some, like our friend Simon Dark here. You know, even those questionable actions, but he still gets the job done for his neighborhood. Showing up. Yeah, being there and just making sure that the neighborhood stays safe. And all he wants to do at the end is just chill. Read yeah. a book with his cat and just chill. Right. You know, it's like, that's cool life. Simple. <laughs> and still Quiet. Being, right? Still being a hero. And he, wants to, he just wants to eat. Yeah. You know? Don't want anything, any of the fancy things. Mm -hmm. It's like there's right. no FOMO, you know, if I'm missing out on anything, yeah. it's just a simple thing. Well, right, uh, being invisible isn't good. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with being invisible. Right. You always gotta be known, it's like... But they, ironically, they know of him. They know of him, they don't see him. Yeah. All right. so, the whole Freddy Krueger vibe, but it's like more of in a positive way of just how people see him. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, let, let Simon Dark's um, example his actions be an example for what you guys can do in, in uh, on your journey, you know? You don't necessarily have to be a, a vigilante hero, you know, just, but metaphorically, what you can do for your community, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you are in the world, you know, just let it be shown through your actions, you know, you don't always have to voice it aggressively, you know, it can show love and just let your work speak for itself. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So just like that, all of this, be an example and soak in and help you self-reflect on where you need to be and who you are as a human being. It's like, later on you find out that he's not a human being. He shows his humanity. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe he's just from reading those books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And interpreting it the way he thinks is right. Like having his cat. Uh, therapy, therapy cat. Yeah. Therapy pets. <laughs> I guess it's that time where you say, uh, stay creative, keep creating. Stay independent, have your own voice. Do your best to be a human being and stay motivated and keep going. Yeah, man. Spread the love, kill the negativity. Till next time, y'all. Till next time. Peace. Peace. I wonder if there's any new urban legends. Oh. In our own city. Ooh.